JD, how disappointing to, on Anzac Day to concede 50 and come up with a, a performance like that? Yeah, very disappointing, especially with the two-week leading that we've had and the detail in how we wanted to play, and especially defensively. But, you know, we started off loose, you know, 10 nil down, then we fought our way back, started getting some resolve back in our D, got some field position, scored some points and looked back in the contest and then one kick that goes dead. We don't touch a ball for seven sets and we go in at 30 to four. It's just a myriad of errors in terms of de defensively that we haven't, that we've practiced, 100% we've practiced in and around our ruck, in and around our decisions on our edges and we're just not nailing them when, it, when the pressure's on. Were you confident, like after the the Cronulla performance, I know you didn't win, but it was gutsy. And then the two weeks, you, did you think there was going to be more than that tonight? Like, what gave you that indication? Yeah, I, the way we've trained, you know, and I think there's times in that game where you can see that, you know, it's not it's not just about effort. You know, playing against a world-class team with world-class players, and if you're going to give them ruck speed and play at the, at the speed they want to play at, they're going to, they're going to get you. They're, it's either side of half time again, three weeks in a row where we've let the game go. So, you know, the players got to take some ownership of that. It takes some ownership of their own performances and start executing the things that we know we can. But as coaches, we'll, you know, we set ourselves a five-week plan to improve and we'll stay to that because it's not going to improve in one night, you know, in one week, it, it will get better. There will obviously be more talk about your job. Like, do you anticipate you'll be given that time? Like, is, there's been no conversations about anything else? We've got no idea, Jake. Mm. You know, that's what I'll turn up to do. Um, like I've said before, you know, I love coaching this club, love coaching this team. I'll turn up and keep giving me best. And if someone taps me on the shoulder and says that time's up, then it'll it, that I can't control that. But it's salvageable. 100% it's salvageable. Again, like I said, you see periods tonight where the team looks like the team we're capable of. We just got to be buying and doing it for longer periods. And it's the technical side in the contest where we're not controlling the offloads, we're not prepared to get dirty at times, run to tackles. Um, you know, stuff over the last few years we've been good at. Um, you know, we've just dropped that level a bit and we're focusing more on the outcome rather than sticking in the moment and owning each moment on its merit. If we get back to doing that like we did at periods in the second half, then we'll, we'll get out of it. But um, like I said to the player, it's, the talk's over. We need to deliver. We need to get it done. Jason, um, what did you make at the start? The two first storm tries involved pretty unlucky sort of kicks and bounces. That, what did you think of that? Again, I, I, that's what I was alluding to before. You know, if you're going to let the ruck be quick and, and let them generate second phase and offloads, Jerome Hughes and Munster are some of the best unstructured footy players in the game. And, and they were tonight. They were outstanding. I don't want to sit here and just talk about how we, we, we weren't at our best. We've got to give credit to Storm as well. They were... They were excellent tonight. They, every chance they had, they took, and every bounce of the ball when they ended in their hands. But that happens when you're playing on the front foot. And to give away, you spoke pre-game about defence. That's a, it's the, that's the fix you guys need to do. You get give away 54 points the most this season. That pretty disappointing. Yeah, usually disappointing. It's certainly not what we come here to do. Um, but like I said, it's there'll be detail in that. You know, every point we conceded there'll be things where individually we need to own our, our roles um, but collectively as a group as a staff as, as a team um, you know we'll be honest with our review and we'll go after it next week I guess. Do, you, do you look to make changes I guess a, a player is on, on notice after this result well there's been some changes over the last couple of weeks but yeah 100% we'll be looking at it um, at the moment we've got 21 fit players available you know, we're, we're, it's not like we've got a host of players that we can bring in, but you know, there's Talis Duncan and Kepi there in, in the, on the fringes and Isaac Thompson. So again, we'll, re we'll review the tape. We'll see where, if we can make improvements and we will, but ultimately it's not about changes. It's about changes in e each individual owning their roles at key moments in the game. For three weeks in a row, 30 minute mark, it's a contest. And then by the 45th minute mark, the game's been blown away. So well, we need to be better there. One of those changes was David Fernie brought him into take control of the defence. Um, now, a few days ago you said it was great to be able to bring him in and we had those conversations in the off-season, so it was just a matter of saying, OK, now is the time to get that voice in. Why, was he, why wasn't he brought in at the start of the season? Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, we've got the staff in and I trusted the staff we had, but 
the end of the day, we're not getting the improvement we need. So we, we look to make sure we're giving the players what they need. You know, and at the end of the, it, like I said, you know, is that going to be the fix? And that was the question that was asked in the press conference. And the answer is, I'll tell you after the 80 minutes. But you know, Dave's come in and done a good job. He's done what, what was required to make sure that we're identifying the things we need to be better at. And we did. And we've trained at that. But we didn't put it on the field. And that's, that's the difference at the moment. We've got to put what we're doing at training on the field. Tane Milne, JD, like, what did you make of that action at the end? Probably careless and, and, and unnecessary. Yeah, probably ends a dumb night mm. on a dumb note. So, you know, it's just, you know, I thought he was trying to come in and got knocked down a bit, so I'll have to have a look at it and look at it closely, but, you know, it's a frustrating way to end the game. Where does that leave you outside depth-wise? Like outside backs, like, obviously you're already missing a few guys. If he gets suspended, like, how do you shape up there out wide now? Uh, like I said, we've got Isaac Thompson there, who's... 19th man tonight, so there's, there's options there. I thought Jacob Gagai did a great job for us tonight in his second second game, so um, yeah, we've got options, but whoever puts on a rabbit eye shirt, we'll be ready to go. Cameron, do you have anything to add, like from the players' perspective? Do you, I suppose, do you see things the same way as your coach? Yeah, same way. Thanks, guys. Uh, three tries in, in the space of nine minutes against the top team, that's a positive in this game. Yeah, it is. It is. As, as, as I said, you know, it was a challenge at half time to respond, and, and we did that. So, there's, like I said, inside that game, there's some positives, but it's hard to talk about them when you can see 50 points. This year, NRL on 9 is your one stop shop for all footy. That's right, Freddie. Not about the highlights, action. Seven days a week. Billy and Gus podcast, get them on your drive on the way home. Immortal behaviour. Grab a seat on the couch for that, and of course, my favourite, Freddie in the Ain. The best footy brains, the biggest games. Don't trust the algorithm, subscribe to NRL on 9 and get all your entertainment there.